All right, guys. Um, now that your pre-work is completed, well, first of all, welcome to week seven. Um, great job so far. Moving right along with the narrative. Um, and now that your pre-work is completed, uh, it's time to dive into writing the narrative. Um, so as you mentioned before, or as mentioned before, writing the narrative will take time. Um, and a number of revisions, so we really want to use these next few weeks wisely. Um, we're kind of on the tail end of this class here, but you still do have plenty of time. Get those revisions in, set your, you know, set a, a comfortable pace for yourselves to work through this narrative, because it will, it will take some time, and it's a different way of, you know, when you're writing about your learning, it's a, it's a different way of writing, so you want to give yourself some time to get um, used to that approach but everything's looking good so far, so keep it up. Alright, so this is just a quick review of the different components in the narrative of competencies. Uh, the description of learning, documentation, and learning from experience. So with your pre-work completed, you should have a pretty good handle on these different components, and you can always refer back to the example in John Student's ePortfolio. Um, to help get a visual of what it might look like completed. Um, now please remember that John's student's narrative and his learning descriptions um, are pretty basic and yours will be much more in depth. So, um, you know, you'll be providing specific details and examples and outlining the change in behavior, your skills, your understanding that accompanies learning these new things. Um, whereas in that example, in John's student's example, um, it's, it's pretty basic. It's kind of just the starting phases of it. So keep that in mind when you're looking at it. Just use it as kind of a visual to help you see, you know, how to organize things, but as far as the content is concerned, um, keep that in mind. And so basically what I'm saying is yours will most likely be much, much longer and more in depth than that example. And that's great. That's definitely what you want. <laughs> okay, so in writing the narrative of competencies, you are explaining your learning. You know, we've been over this. Um, not simply listing the duties and tasks that you've performed. So, of course, in order to provide context, you will have to list details of the job performed and explain a bit about the environment in which you are learning, but you are taking it further than that to include how you might apply your learning and skills in other areas, or maybe explaining a time when you made a mistake and how you modified your process to correct it. Maybe you have trained others in a job or a skill and you explain why you used a certain approach in helping them learn the information. The process of your learning must be clear. Um, so you do want to give some of that background, some of that context information to kind of introduce your learning experience when you're writing your learning description. So if you took a course, for instance, um, you might want to explain a little bit about how long that course was. Um, what the type of assessments were. Did you take tests? Did you do um, practical applications? You know, were you practicing what you learned in there? Um, kind of just to give the evaluator a little bit of an idea and some context bet behind how you learn this information. Because think, you know, the evaluator, when he's, when that when he or she is teaching that class, they know exactly what the students are doing to learn that information, but they don't know what you're doing. So you want to give them a little bit of that information to help them, you know, visualize and paint the whole picture of your learning processes. Um, and then you want to go dive into explaining, um, explaining your learning. So on the screen are some questions to help you focus in on explaining your learning. Um, this is not an exhaustive list, but just some points to consider in your learning descriptions. Take some time, read over these, and refer back to them as you are writing your descriptions of learning. Um, there's also a printout with these questions. Um, so these questions to consider, the college level learning guidelines that we covered in the last, um, last week in the slides, um, and then also information about Bloom's taxonomy, which we'll cover in the next slide. So there's a printout for all this information um, in the course documents tab in your Blackboard 
under narrative of competencies resources. So this would be a good thing, you know, you might not want to go back and watch these entire presentations again, but just to have a printout with this information that you can refer to, um, you can find that. Course Documents tab in Blackboard under Narrative of Competencies Resources if you scroll down to the bottom. It's right there. Um, so print that out. It might be helpful to have it handy um, to keep you on track when you're writing your descriptions. Okay, so now that you have some guidelines, we can look at how to articulate your learning. So how are you really going to explain this um, and expand on your learning? Um, the triangle in the chart you see on the screen describe Benjamin Bloom's revised Bloom's taxonomy, which he developed to classify different levels of learning and understanding. Um, these diagrams explain the cognitive domain or the area related to thinking, learning, and understanding. So cognition, um, thinking, learning, understanding, exactly what you're trying to explain in your narratives. The triangle at the top shows the different levels of understanding from lower order thinking on the bottom with remembering to higher, higher order thinking on the top with creating. So this shows you um, you know, starting at the bottom with remembering, this is kind of a way to demonstrate growth in your learning. Um, you know, the first time you see something, you remember it, you know, that old memorizing, those kind of things, and then later on you can apply it, you can create from it, you know, that's the highest, highest order. So it shows you from the very bottom moving on up to the top. Um, so comparing your learning to this chart will help you further organize it. Using these learning terms in your descriptions will help you more clearly articulate your competencies and also provide variety to your descriptions. So um, you can see in the box um, are the, the same learning levels from the triangle, the colored sections, with accompanying learning terms. These terms can be helpful when understanding your learning and describing it in the narrative of competencies. So you can see some of those learning terms. For, so for example, the very bottom one, remembering. Uh, can the student recall or remember the information? That's the level of learning. It's just basic recall. Do they recognize this information? So some of those learning terms, um, duplicate, memorize, recall, repeat. That's the, the level of learning there. But if you go up to the blue section, evaluating almost the, the second from the top, can the student justify a stand or decision? So does the student, does the person have understanding of this to make an argument and defend that argument? Um, you know, it's more than just basic recall, but it's really an understanding to be able to um, explain and kind of know the depth a little bit of, of that information. So some of those learning terms, argue, defend, recommend, um, support. So you can see the difference with the terms in the levels of understanding. And this will really help you, excuse me, when you're writing these learning descriptions, putting these learning terms in there really shows the level of your learning. Um, and also when you're looking at your course content summaries, this will help you decide how in depth you need to know this information because these learning terms are the terms that start those learning objectives. So they might say the student will remember or the student will um, be able to argue or the student will demonstrate. So you can say, okay, well, how much do I need to know to be able to meet this um, competency? And this will kind of help you across the board with your learning descriptions. So an example would be, um, for instance, if you have worked as a manager and you've hired employers. Um, Think about the, the skills and the knowledge that are required to do something like that. Uh, manage people and also hire employers. So there's a lot of different you know, levels of learning included in there. Um, so you can review 
you're learning and you might realize that some of your skills may fall under evaluating and analyzing. So when you think when you hire employers, you know, in your interviews and in your assessments, reviewing, re reviewing resumes, you're comparing that employer's skills to the requirements of the job, you're evaluating that possible, or not employer, that impossible um, candidate in your interview, and you're deciding if they match up um, with what's required for that position. You're really analyzing and you're evaluating. So those could be some of your learning levels that you, you know, your levels of understanding that you have learned from that position. So using the learning terms, a sentence in your learning description may sound something like, I learned to evaluate potential job candidates by comparing their skills, demeanor, and work histories with a prepared list of competencies for the position. Um, so the learning terms of evaluating and comparing were used in this description to clearly describe the learning. So that's very clear at what level that student has understands that information and understands those skills and then you know going on to further expand and give an example um, explain that learning a little further maybe explaining a time when they hired the wrong person and then they realized you know they evaluated that situation and realized what happened the steps they put in place to make sure that doesn't happen again you know all those things that's a learning story right there You're really going in depth and explaining that um, so these terms will really help you organize everything um, yeah so definitely print that out print that um, document out under the course documents section um, you know use this as a guide to help you with your learning it keeps things um, organized it also keeps things interesting for the evaluator because it gives you a variety of terms to use to explain your learning so you're not repeating the same things over and over um, which is helpful too makes your writing more interesting okay so that's it for this for this um, presentation really it's just time to get out there and start writing the narrative um, so on the screen just some things to get started so go back review uh, the course content summary in your pre-work review that really get in that mindset to start writing your narrative um, start with your learning outcome statements so start your descriptions with those learning outcome statements that will really help you to start describing your learning and not explaining what you did so you're not just making a list of tasks that you completed but you're explaining your learning you're explaining the processes the why's the how's behind what you did um, that'll really help set you up for that um, begin writing your learning description so in the narrative begin writing those things and then conduct research incorporate theories and concepts as needed so if there's some things in there you know continue to do that as you're writing um, so please let me know if you have any questions I'm here to help as always and I look forward to seeing some examples um, in the discussion board coming up alright have a great week guys